Hello students! I'm now going to work through a couple of examples um, from the homework, from the uh, alkene oxidation practice. One through six, hopefully we're fairly straightforward. But here are me working through a couple of the solutions for seven, eight, and nine. Uh, you should be able to find on the haiku some answers here. So feel free to check these out. And also, um, I want to talk about, I want to talk through some of them um, because I know for some of you the solutions uh, might not be that helpful. I also would like to encourage you to grab a hold of this. So for most of you, I think you got a copy of this already. This is the giant table of organic reactions. This is all the reactions we're going to learn all year. So it's super helpful to actually have a physical copy of this. Um, so if you don't have one, uh, see if you can't find a way to print a copy of this, or at the very least, uh, have it up on your computer because I know that we learned all of these and you probably don't remember some of them and that's totally fine. We're gonna take this month to sort of review and practice some, some of these some more. So let's look at number seven says, we have this molecule, what is that? Um, pentene, two pentene and we wanna make it into that molecule. There's a couple of different ways to do that. One way of course, this being alkene oxidation, we could do a little bit of oxidation here we don't want to do the hot acid because I would rip this thing clean in half, but what we could do is react with some cold base, right, and get this, the vicinal diols. And then is there a substitution reaction where we can substitute one for the other? Yes, there is. That's SN2. So you could add something like uh, HBr to go from here to here. That's totally fine. That works. And also, there's actually a simpler reaction to go from here to here in one step, okay? And that's way, way back in the beginning of the year, we talked about MEA, and we talked about halogenation. If you just add Br2, Br2, because this is a double bond, you'll add one bromine here and one bromine here, you'll get this in one step. So this is actually probably the preferred um, mechanism or the preferred way to do this reaction. Why did I throw this into this alkene oxidation practice? Because what I wanted you to do is think about when you're doing these organic synthesis exercises, don't just think about the most recent thing we did. Try to think about sort of the best way to do something. And the best way would be the way that is cleanest, that is that doesn't give you a bunch of other side products, right? So doing free radical chain reaction on a huge molecule and just hoping that the halogen adds where you want it to add, that's not, that's not gonna be very clean, right? So you want something that's clean and all other things being equal, if you have two different things that are equally clean, you want the one that is shortest. It has the fewest number of steps. And because this only has one step, that's probably the way to go. Well, let's look at number eight. Number eight, we're starting, we're taking this and we're making this. At first glance, if you look at this, that might look super intimidating because this looks huge, right, and complicated, and it's got all those O's, and you're like, ah, I don't even know where to start with that, right? So take a time out, take a deep breath. The one thing you often wanna look at when you start is what does the carbon skeleton look like? That's right, you have to do some counting. So over here, our reactant only has four carbons. In our product, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, we have eight carbons. So that tells us a couple things. Thing number one is we're gonna need more than one of these molecules, right? We don't just, in organic synthesis, start with a single molecule. We start with a whole flask or a whole beaker. So let's assume we have as, much of, or as many of these molecules as we need. Something else about that is, if there's four carbons here, and eight over here, it doesn't say that for sure what's happening, but it sounds like maybe if we have two of these, we can make one of these, right? So we learned some stuff about the carbon skeleton. Now let's look at this. A lot of times, if you have something like this that takes a couple of different steps, it's hard to know where to start. However, if you look at the product, sometimes we can figure out what the last step was. Look at this product for a minute. What are these functional groups? Do you recognize those? Right, those are esters. That's right, esters. So we know, even if we don't know how this reaction starts, we know how it probably ends. It probably ends with forming those esters. So we can do what's called retrosynthesis. Retrosynthesis is a fancy way of saying, if you don't know how to start, go to the end and work your way backwards. So what is the last step? Well, the last step is forming these esters. If you need to take a minute and review 
Fisher esterification on your handout. Go ahead and press pause for a second and review that and see if you can't write out the products that go here, right? What you're gonna use to make this. Go ahead, I'll wait. Okay, hopefully you got a chance to review Fisher esterification and what you found was you need this acid and this alcohol. So here's our last step, going from here to here to here. All right, that is actually helpful. Now we can go back and look at this and say, how is this related to these? Remember, this, these, uh, this homework packet is called like practice with alkene oxidation. So maybe that gives us a clue that alkene oxidation is involved. First of all, let's look at this middle piece. How can we take this and convert it into that? This is just four carbons in a row with neighboring alcohols. If we have neighboring alcohols, that implies that we can do a cold base alkene oxidation with this to get this. Okay. So this is just And how do we make this bit? This is only two carbons with an acid. Oh, two carbons with an acid might imply we took this and cut it in half. So you can also make this using potassium permanganate hot acid, right? So basically three steps total. You take some of this, do cold base alkene oxidation, some of this and do hot acid alkene oxidation. And we take these things together what do we need to go from here to here? I forgot that part. Right, we're adding sulfuric acid or H plus. This is the reaction that you did to make juicy fruit, the banana oil, Fisher esterification. All right, I'm gonna erase this and we'll do number nine real quick. Number nine, again, looks funky, right? You look at, you're starting material, and then you look at your ending material, and that might be kind of intimidating. You're like, oh, I'm starting with this, I'm ending with that. Let's use the same process we just did back a minute ago with number eight, right? So in number nine, first of all, count your carbons. We got four here. Over here, we got one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four. So we have four here and a total of eight over there, which means probably we're gonna need two of these to make that. Again, I don't see exactly, we got a functional group here and a functional group there. We're paying attention to the functional groups because those are the things that can react with each other. I'm still not totally seeing it, but here's something that's helpful. Let's do retrosynthesis, right? So I don't know what the, what the first step is, but I bet I can figure out what the last step is. What sorts of functional groups do we have here and here? It's the same one. It's not the ester, it is ethers. So what reaction will form ethers? If you're not sure, check your free gift, right? So check your free gift, figure out what reaction makes ethers, and I want you to, right now, right here, draw in the reactants for the last step. Go ahead and hit pause, I'll wait, and then we'll look at what the answer is. Okay, you, you drew them out, right? You didn't, you're not just like listening to me talk. You know, this is, this is way more fun when you're actually sitting there instead of me just talking to an empty lab. Um, but anyhow, <laughs> let's look at what we might have here. In order to make an ether, we need alcohols and we need haloalkanes. So we might use something like this on the one side, and on the other side, something like this. And you'll remember to actually do waves in ether synthesis, we're gonna use an active metal like sodium or potassium. Okay, and there's other possibilities too. You could put like OH and BR, and OH and BR, something like that. But here's one possibility. So we're making these things. 
Okay, now how can we make this from this? One of the things I notice here is that here we have two functional groups together, and here we have a functional group here, and the, sort of this extra functional group here. So we have to kind of decide what we're gonna do. We could use MEA to try to add another group here or here. The problem is if we just do MEA, and we do like uh, hydration to add water, or we do something like HBR, right, that hydrohalogenation, we don't know exactly where that new group is gonna add. Is it gonna add here or is it gonna add here? Because according to Markovnikov's law, they have the same substitution. And we want these both to be next to each other, right? So that tells us maybe we actually wanna play just with this functional group and not that, right? So that one of the tricks here is that this thing is extra. So we have this BR and we wanna get rid of it how can we get rid of an excess dangling halogen? You can actually do that using the Grignard reagent. So you can make a Grignard reagent and then just add what to it? If you just add water to this, guess what? That destroys the Grignard reagent and we just get to this. And now we have something that's cleaner and nicer. And now we can go from here to here in one step. That's right, I said one step. How do we take an alkene and give it neighboring alcohols, right? Dare I say vicinal alcohols, it's a vicinal diol. This of course is potassium permanganate, the cold base version. And deja vu with number seven. Remember we talked about a problem like this on number seven above. What's the easiest, best way to go from an alkene to a vicinal dibromide, that would just be Markovnikov electrophilic addition, MEA. That one is the halogenation. Anyhow, hopefully this was helpful. Uh, I'm gonna make another video and talk about 10 and 11.